Welcome to the Thomas Industry Update Podcast, actionable information for industry leaders. I'm Tony Uphoff. 51% of marketers say video delivers the best ROI of any type of content, and for good reason. Business leaders who used video as a part of their marketing strategy brought in 66% more qualified leads than those who relied only on their website, email outreach, and other standard marketing tactics. But industrial businesses are unique with long sales cycles and specific customer needs. Typical B2B marketing tactics don't always work for them. So how does video translate into a marketing strategy tailored specifically to an industrial business? I invited Chris Bryant into our studio to find out. Chris is the creative director at Empire Studios, a video digital marketing agency based in New York and Connecticut. I talked to Chris about why video is such a key element of industrial marketing, how to get started incorporating videos into your industrial business strategy, and what mistakes to avoid in filming and publicizing your new video content. Welcome, Chris. Really excited to have you here. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. This is going to be an action-packed episode. <laughs> People are going to be taking notes. It's going to be they a lot indeed. of actionable stuff from this They year. are indeed. Why don't you start off, describe what Empire Studios is, and give a little bit about your background and how you got into this, Chris. Sure. You know, Empire Studios is a video production agency. We focus largely on corporate video and manufacturing. I'd say 95% of what we do is manufacturing. A large part of that is the plastics industry. Um, I got into it just because I always wanted to you know, be in film. I saw Jurassic Park opening night, 93, and I said, I, I want to be doing film. I, I understood the, the concept of telling stories through video. Marketing today no longer should feel like marketing. Good marketing is just an organic like experience. It's just it's building that experience with, uh, between your customers and yourself. Talk a little bit more about, you know, how do you see video as a part of a marketing strategy today? You know, we're noting that 61% of content marketers are now using video content to keep up with the competition and establish their brands, and this is clearly growing. Talk a little bit about how you see it fitting into the marketing mix. I gave a talk recently where I said 2019 is no longer, it's not like it's the year of video. And that wasn't even last year. That was like 10 years ago. Yeah. So you need to get on board with it quickly. But one of my favorite sayings is, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. Yeah. The second best time is today. Yeah. I believe yeah. it's a Chinese it's problem. Great. It's so great. it's like, okay, if you, if you haven't done up to this point, that's fine. You see what works in the market, what doesn't, jump in. You'll be very happy if you started today versus if you started in a year. And it's just, there's so many, there's such great results from video if you have a strategic video marketing plan, if you just say, I want to make a video in general, and you just say, let me talk about everything, you need to tell a story, like, yeah. to your point. Why do you think it works particularly well in manufacturing and industrial markets? And you would reference, Chris, that you've got a particular expertise in some of the plastics part of the marketplace. Why do you think it works so well in this part of the market? Because other people aren't doing it. There's a lot yeah, of people in the manufacturing industry yeah. that haven't really embraced video yet. They're still doing a lot of print advertising and things like yeah. that. But it's like it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. The, the places I go to, they're like they've never ever done video before. Video is not a line item on their you know expense sheet once a year, and it's just their competitors either aren't doing it or they're doing it very very poorly, or they just have like one general video. Yeah. I call those like the kitchen sink videos, where like they they said, oh I've never done a video before. I want to talk about like about us, our entire history, our testimonies. I want to you know interview our employees about what a great place it is to work. Yeah. It's like a drone is flying over the building. For all kinds yeah. of stuff, yeah. but it's and it's it's everything all together. Yeah. And it's like you're not really telling one story, you're trying to jumble it all. So when you have a video agency come in and say, let's figure out the best story to tell, it's tremendous results. Yeah. When video came in, of course, 20 years ago, when you say, when you hear video, you're thinking a television commercial, $100,000 to get your foot in the door to even think about something like that. Yeah. The price have come down so much, you know, video production house can do it for a fraction of that now. So you can do multiple videos, telling multiple stories, speaking to multiple buyers across different parts of the buyer's journey. Yeah. It's just tremendous results and the big people like Coca-Cola, you know, Pepsi, Chevy, Cadillac, they jumped into video earlier because they have deeper pockets. A lot of manufacturers, they're big businesses, but they're not like they don't have Coca-Cola budgets. Yeah. yeah. But it's getting videos getting to the point now where it's very, very accessible. It's interesting. One of the things that we we hear a lot from the users of a platform like ThomasNet is they turn to us to really understand 
is this a real company? Is this company capable of producing custom manufacturing process the way that it looks like there is on their website? But they invariably take the next step. Oftentimes they'll spend a lot of time on the about us section and things like that. Video works particularly well because they're trying to get eyes on this, right? And it's not a plant tour, but it's the next best thing. Mm -hmm. And it allows them to see the people behind it, to see the quality of workmanship, to see the things that they emphasize, the pride they have. And again, I can't get past this idea that it allows you to tell a story. And oftentimes, as a seller of products and services, I'm not completely sure what's going to resonate the most with somebody I might be selling a service to. Whereas a video, I think, in many regards, allows the viewer or the buyer in this context, to kind of see what they're most interested in. It could be a picture of the factory, it could be an interview with a a key executive or the highlight of some sort of special function, right? Mm -hmm. You know, manufacturing function. Yeah, you hit on the head because uh, video, you very quickly build up trust with that. If you read a a long blog post and maybe it has like a a, a photo in it, that's, that's, that's fine, but video, is huge because you're seeing the people that everybody from the C-suite to the people that are on the shop floor that are putting it together and you're seeing their knowledge, you're seeing their passion for it, you're seeing their individual uniqueness, their characteristics. Yeah. So potential buyers looking at that video going, I can relate to that person, yeah. whether that's the person on the shop floor yeah. or the, the C-level executive. And they go, I can relate to that. It's not just a big building out in Utah. It's made up of those people and you already feel that you can trust them. You know, it's interesting because you've been a part of our journey with video and (laughs) and watched our evolution over the last, what, two and a half, almost three years Mm -hmm. now. And what's been fascinating is how much when I go out into the marketplace, it's created a personality for our company. Mm -hmm. People really feel they know us because they see me or they see many of our execs or they see different components of what we do via video. And it's created a much higher level of familiarity. Our brand understanding has gone up exponentially, but there's also this kind of personal connection mm-hmm. where oftentimes I'll walk in the room, someone go, well, I know you. Yeah, exa- yes. And there's this kind of really nice, you, you feel like there really aren't cold calls anymore. You're almost mm-hmm. kind of, you know, it's a, a much warmer engagement because sure. people feel like they've seen you and they understand something about you and your company before they actually meet you. Yeah, I mean, before they, a customer today picks up the phone to give somebody a call, they've already done the majority of right. their research. Yep. And if you add video to that mix, it's like, I already feel like I know Tony. How would you advise somebody kind of wrestling this to the ground? How, how would they get started? And how might they start to think about, I've never done video. How would I start to, to think about, you know, approaching it and getting involved? Okay. The last thing you should do is look to the competition and see what they're doing. Because just because somebody else is doing it doesn't mean it's the best way to do yeah. it. Take a time out. Write down your top three things that are keeping you up at night. What are the biggest challenges for your hmm. business? Maybe it's not even pushing out product at the moment. Maybe your current biggest headache is personnel, finding qualified, yeah. talented people. Put together a video about careers, like how great it is to work there, testimonials about you know from in staff. Or it could be, hey, we launched this product last year. It hasn't got a whole lot of traction. You know, We want the sales to go up, but we feel that people don't understand it properly. Then let's not make a general about your company video. Let's make a video about that product and try to answer the questions that you're hearing come in from the field yep. and answer that in a video and then get that out there. You mentioned before that it's more accessible financially mm-hmm. than it used to be because I remember those days in quote-unquote industrial or B2B videos Man, it wasn't for the faint of heart. I no. mean, you had to have big budgets and the big, you know, IBMs of the world and you know, sure. big companies were doing it, but the smaller company didn't have access. Today they do. Mm-hmm. G- give us kind of a crawl, walk, run, you know, for our listeners. How, how might they start to think about a video investment and give us a range of, of how, how they might start to think about a budget? Sure. Okay, so for crawl, you can pick up a camera and do it yourself. You can have a cell phone camera if it's something that's, if it's a video type that doesn't need to be polished. Let's say something just happened in your factory, it's exciting, um, you know, maybe somebody that has been there, it's their 50th year anniversary, you know, yeah. a professional video, pick up your phone and film that, hey, here's what's going on today, and then give that kind of content to people. And it doesn't need to be polished, heck, it could even be vertical, depending on where you're going to post it. And I encourage people to do that, because you need to be doing a lot of video. Yeah. And not all of it needs to be professional. Yeah. Some of it can be done like that. Middle of the road, you're looking at hiring a video production company for things that need to be polished. We're looking at general company overview videos. Customer testimonial videos are huge, huge. Those should be professionally shot, crew coming in, lighting, that kind of thing. So for that, you're looking at, again, it ranges depending on travel or different locations. Um, You're looking at probably starting at maybe 6,000 up to maybe 12 or so. There's a lot of play in there. And that's typically a small crew that comes in and it's gonna be a really polished video. But you need to have a strategy. The run, is if you have a, a major thing you're doing like a maybe not a Super Bowl spot, but you're doing something that's 
content that you want to maybe go viral, so you want to maybe have sets or a set, and those you probably are still looking at starting at 100,000 yeah. or so. Those yeah. get big. It's interesting because I, I can so relate to what you're talking about because we started, as we called it around here, we were one step above shaky cam, <laughs> you know, with our weekly video we called mm-hmm. the Thomas Index Report. And we've gotten a little bit more sophisticated as we've gone along I've with seen. that. But part of what we decided is, you know, if we wait until it's absolutely slickly produced, it'll never go out. It's never going to go out. And also for our market, we were really wanting to make sure that we led with our authenticity and the quality of our data. Mm-hmm. So companies have, have made a commitment to video, some way, shape, or form, right? You touched on a couple of ideas, but how, how would you recommend they start brainstorming the content? Because I think that's where we find a lot of people get hung up. Sure. So the biggest thing is listening. Listen to both people internally at your company. Talk to sales, talk to marketing, and say, you know, like I said before, what keeps you up at night? What are your biggest challenges? And kind of ask all the salespeople, or at least, you know, the, the key ones, or the, the head of the departments, and then kind of cross-reference to see what the biggest challenges are. Another one is to listen to your customers. Are they having trouble with something? Is yeah. there confusion about your product or your service? Or is there like some frequently asked questions they always have, yeah. and you find that your sales team is always answering the, the same five or six questions? Maybe video content could help answer that. And would you recommend, Chris, having company people speak versus hiring somebody who's not an actor but a spokesperson? Mm-hmm. Would you emphasize kind of, hey, it should be you. It should be your company. And Because and, we hear from some people, Hey, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. I can't go on camera. I feel very uncomfortable on camera. Or I don't, you know, the old Joe, I've got a face made for radio or whatever the heck <laughs> that it might be, right? What, what advice would you give there to people? That can be a tough one because I always recommend having the actual people behind the company yeah. is huge. We think so too. I've never come across a point where like there's a company that not a single person there is at least okay on camera. But let's just say, hypothetically, everybody is camera shy. I found that by putting the camera in their face anyway, sometimes it's not the optimal results because they look very stiff. The thing with video is you need to be as genuine as possible yeah. and come across if you get yeah. comfortable. Not always easy. Not always easy. Yeah. Especially because, yeah, manufacturing. I mean, you know, for example, people are amazing engineers, amazing, you know, CMOs, amazing CFOs, but they're not used to being in front of the camera yeah. necessarily. So if you can identify a couple people that would do well on camera, no matter where they are in the, the hierarchy of the company, if they're, you know, at least conversational, I would highly recommend that over a spokesperson or anything like that. I'd agree. Yeah. Now, what what mistakes do you commonly see businesses who are kind of stepping into video make? You know, give us kind of the, hey, here's the things to stay away from or, or to look out for. Top three, in this order. Number one is not having a proper budget, but moving forward anyway. Mm. Hey, I've yeah, got that's a good 500 one. bucks. Let me make this video. Yeah. Can you find someone to make your video for $500? Yes. Will it look like it was made for $500? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's very, very important to put proper budgeting behind it because if a potential customer sees this video, and that's the first time they've ever heard of your company, they're like, let me learn a little bit more. And they see this video, and it looks like someone's nephew out of high school shot this thing, and yeah. it's not good quality. Yeah. That's the potential customer's perceived quality of what you make. You can yeah. make the best widget in the world, but if that video looks really, really amateur. It's like, yep. do I want to do business with How good is their, their product? Let me watch another video of somebody else. So that's number one, not having a proper budget for it. The next one is not having a clear story. So don't, don't make a kitchen sink video. Be very clear. I always recommend having one, maybe two points in the video, like things that you want to focus on. Sure. And then have a clear call to action, even if it's as simple as your URL of your yep. website. Number three is distribution strategies. Yep. If you, for example, Upload it to YouTube. And let's say hypothetically you make a great thumbnail, you have great tags, great description, all the SEO for YouTube. If you make that perfect, but that's all you do and you forget about it, you'll have the best video and nobody's ever seen. Leverage your social media networks. Post to Twitter multiple times. Post to Facebook. Embed it in LinkedIn. And when I say uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, if you upload those natively, you'll get much more views because those platforms want to publish their own content and share yeah. that versus if you just copy and paste the YouTube link. And don't get hung up on vanity metrics saying, oh, I want to share my YouTube link because I want to get a lot of views on my YouTube. What you want is the best views possible. I've talked to some people where they only have 100 views, but that 100 views has amazing you bet. quality as far yeah. as the leads who've seen it. There's one video I did on my own YouTube channel where I had 61 views and that landed me a major brand deal. Yep. I had 61 views, but they liked the personality, yep. they liked the quality, yep. and, and it led to something big. And distribution also internally. So empower the yep. salespeople to say, hey, listen, here's some content we've made. 
take a look at it, learn it, and that way if you come up across like some kind of an issue within the sales process and they have a question that can be answered very easily in the video, share the link and say, hey, yeah. you've had this concern, here's a video we produced, check this out and hopefully it'll, it'll help you. Huge point, Chris, I would emphasize that. You know, One of the things that we talk a lot about in the marketplace is B2B selling today is not what you know, it's what you share. Yeah. Because your prospect is upwards of 70% of the way through a purchase process before they're gonna reach out to sales. You touched on that a little bit earlier mm -hmm. in the interview. As a result of that, as a sales professional, oftentimes it's what I'm sharing, it's what I'm posting, it's what I'm sending to a prospect or a customer that allows me to move a sale process along. So it's not just, I have all the information, I'm gonna hold on to it until they engage with me, because those days are gone. Mm -hmm. And so I think videos are very, very easy to digest, I guess is what I would say, on the, the prospect side. You know, they can look at a 90 second video. You know, it's not like downloading a white paper or something that they feel they're gonna have to make a larger commitment to reading through and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, somebody would much rather watch a 90 second video than read a full page blog post. Yeah. Now that's not to say you shouldn't still make the blog post. If you make video, you've already made multiple things, if yeah. you think about it. You can strip the video and just have the audio, yep. and depending on what the content is, you've made a podcast or something like that. You, you could transcribe it. Now you have a blog post. Publish a blog post and also embed the video. I mean, that's an SEO dream there. So two questions we ask everybody. What's one thing you wish more people understood about manufacturing? There is a future in it from a career standpoint. I mean, some of my buddies that, we went to, that I went to high school with went to a trade school, yep. and they learned how to do these types of things as CNC operators, and now they're making like good money doing what they love. They're like they're not in an office, which nothing's wrong with that. But for some people, they're like I, I just get antsy. I want to do something and create it with my hands. You know, there's there's money in it, and I don't think I've been to a single manufacturer in all my years doing this where they were properly staffed, 100%. Yeah. Where they said, oh geez, we got people knocking down our doors. You know, the next generation coming in. Everybody has to convince people it's a great future because the people that do work there, especially the younger folks, they love it. Yeah. They said I didn't even think this would be an option. It, it is. So true, and look, we, we chat all the time about you know, the skills shortage and all this, and I, I think sometimes we, we just say it in these ways that everybody just sort of takes it uh, for granted that there's, oh yeah, there's a skills shortage. Well, it's over a million and a half jobs that are wide open right now. We already created 285,000 jobs in U.S. manufacturing last year. And to your point, these are good jobs. Oftentimes, I think the misperception that people have is that they think of these as either white collar or blue collar jobs, we use the term new collar. These are very high tech jobs, right? Yeah. Running a CNC machine is a wickedly advanced technology. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, uh, a simplistic manufacturing tool or device. And so to your point, we think about that a lot. This is probably a little bit uh, less about manufacturing and more about you. If you could put one sentence on a billboard that expresses your personal philosophy, what would it say? A day without a laugh is a wasted day. Charlie Chaplin. Very nice. We're, we're never gonna. We're, nobody gets out of this thing alive. You know, yeah. life is short. Have a good time. Laugh. Yeah. Find the time to watch a comedy. Go to a stand-up show. Yeah. Read, read Garfield. Whatever it is. For more information on how to get started with video for your industrial business, or to get in touch with Chris, check out the resources provided in the show notes of today's episode. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please take a moment to subscribe and rate us on iTunes or recommend us to a colleague. Your feedback helps us continue to advocate for industry across the airwaves. The Thomas Industry Update podcast is recorded at Five Penn Plaza in the heart of New York City, where Thomas has been headquartered for 121 years. Want to get more insights on supply chain, IoT, industrial business, and more? Sign up for our Thomas Industry Update daily newsletter. With more than 300,000 subscribers, your inbox will be in good company. Subscribe now for free at thomasnet.com updates.